advantage. Amen. Circumcision was ordained by God. That was an advantage. God did not give circumcision to all men. This is not, he didn't ordain this for the whole world. At the time, he did not say, all be circumcised. This was for the Jews. It was an advantage. So we're talking, to be, uh, talking about being advantaged by God. The Holy Spirit here, working through Paul, is asking questions. Questions that I don't know is not the right answer. Something that we have to think about. This is where our God is. He gets us to think. It doesn't matter how you perceive yourself. You are created by God and given a mind that is to be used for God. Yeah. And if you're not using it for God, you've wasted what God has given you. Yeah. God has given you an advantage, mm -hmm. a mind to use for him, and you've wasted that advantage. It is wrong for us to waste anything that God has given us. But see here, what we're talking about is God, he's drawing his people to himself. That, that's the point. The whole point of it, you know, is, is God, is that we are coming to him. We're not able to do this on our own. All have sinned. Nothing can take that away. Nothing can take away the fact that we have sinned. Nothing can put away sin before Christ. But how do we know that? How do we know we need a Savior? How do we know we needed Jesus? Well, God's working this out. He's making a people that is getting all advantage. And if anybody was able to do this, it would be the Jews. If anybody was able, God's not going to stand why people say, well, you didn't give us the advantage. God has given an advantage to a people. Notice how God is getting his people to think about this. Asking questions that only a Holy Spirit can answer. This is drawing an honest heart to God. No matter how smart someone is in the flesh, they can't answer these questions. I know. I've asked them. I've gone to people that I thought I held in high regard when it came to where I thought they were very wise people. They had no answers. That's because God doesn't just work through anybody. He, he, works, for, he, he works through people that he has chosen to give the advantage. And when someone has the advantage... You want to pay attention to what God's doing. Mm -hmm. You don't want to disregard what Amen. the advantage that God's given them. Yeah. You must be connected to those who God has chosen if you want to have this revealed to you. We as believers, want to, we want to understand God. We do not want to be to discard what we do not understand. But to ask God to help us to understand what he is doing. Because we know this, that God wants to be known. Or else he wouldn't be going through all this trouble, would he? This is a way of thinking that is spiritual. What advantage then hath the Jew? Well, then I see this is what flesh would do. Flesh would say something smart like this. Nothing. God loves everyone just the same unconditionally. Well, what was the point? That way everybody would feel good about being loved and, and that in that way no one would be offended. But what was he doing with the Jews? Why did he make a people for himself, a special people? The word of God says. The truth is, God picked out these people. He picked out a special people for himself. It says that God has chosen them to be a special people unto himself, Deuteronomy 7, 6. And he gave them an advantage. They had great advantage. Circumcision, 
They were chosen by God. Who would say, if they didn't take this time to think it out, that this was not an advantage? Would anybody say that? God did this to show if man could be righteous, if only given a chance, that here, this was the chance, that they could do this. No, leaving no room for excuses on judgment day. See, this is what flesh likes to do. It likes to make up excuses. And it likes to point the finger and say, not my fault. You're, it was his fault. It was their fault. Anybody's fault but my fault. Yeah. That's what flesh does all day long. Flesh will always whine and cry and say, it's not my fault. Flesh will always complain and point the finger at someone else. We saw this early on. We saw this right from the beginning. See, God doesn't change here. We understand that. But God doesn't change. God is righteous in all his judgments. We know that. In Genesis 2.9, every tree was pleasant to the sight and was good for food. All of them. All of it. Genesis 2, 16 through 17, God, he commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Okay, he, he did that. Because he's good. That's how our God is. But then he didn't hold any secrets back either. He told him the, the way it is. He says, But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. In that day thou eatest, therefore thou shalt surely die. I'm telling you, this is how our God is. He'll tell you something, and it's true, and it's right. He's not holding anything back. If you want the truth and you want the answers, God's going to get it. He's giving it to you. He's made it available. He's not keeping any secrets. See, that's how men do. They keep all the good stuff that's to be secret. They don't want to let anything out that somebody else would get advantage. See, God's given an advantage. Here's the, here's the advantage here. What God said was true. Later, flesh pointed its finger at God, arguing that it was God's fault that they fell away. It's in Genesis 3.12. It says, the woman whom you, those give us me. It was you. You gave me the woman. She took her the, that's right from the get-go. The get here's flesh. But before flesh had, had time to do that, God said, don't eat of the tree. I'm, all, I'm giving you this here. I'm, show, I'm showing you. I'm giving you an advantage. God gave the advantage to Adam by telling him not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God went to great lengths here to give the advantage. If only we had... The chance for the opportunity, flesh would say. So, God going to great lengths to give all advantage to a group of people, the Jews. And not one got the job done. But there's no room for complaining here. What advantage did they have? Much in every way. God held nothing back from the Jews. They really had more than any other people. This is why Jesus was harder on the Pharisees than any other. You notice when we read about who Jesus was the hardest on was the Pharisees, the one who had the truth. We have people today who will say, well, I'm a good person. Will God cast a good person into hell? Well, sin at any level is not good. And all have sinned and come short. Jesus said, there is none good but one. That is God. Matthew 19, 16. But how would we know that unless God went to these great links to show that we needed a Savior? How would we ever know that if he wouldn't have taken a people, the Jews, and made a special people for himself and gave them every advantage, not left any room for complaining, 
I mean, you can complain all day long, but God left no room for complaining. Gave them every advantage to show that we gonna, we're going to need a Savior here. We can't do this on our own. He went to great lengths to do this. We needed Jesus. We need God's righteousness. Regarding the Jews, if God did not do this, we would not be able to think that we needed Jesus. On judgment, all will know that God is right. And there is not going to be any complaining on that day. You know, I thought about this. If you're sick, but you don't feel sick, and you're told, well, you have cancer. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to go to a doctor and see, see if you can fix this. If there's any possible way, I, want to, I can't do it on my own. But you know you got a, a problem. But if you never knew you had the problem, you would continue with that problem until you died. You would never try to take care of it. Not knowing that you're sick, why would you go take care of something you never know about? You're feeling good. You're thinking, you're thinking you're doing good at least. See, we had to know that we were in trouble. We had to know that we needed a Savior. We had to know that without help from our God, that we had to go to him without his help, we had no hope. That we were going to be cast away. Some do not understand how much they need Jesus. But this is not because God hasn't gone out of his way to show that we need Jesus. God is, he, he is right in all his ways. Nobody's going to to cast a word against God because he is, he is perfect. God has made it very clear working with a people who had every advantage that flesh cannot do better on its own. Not one man became righteous because of the great advantage that they had. Not one. And they had advantage. Chiefly, our scripture says here, because to them were committed the oracles of God. These advantages include God. He's communicating with the. Who else did he communicate with? He didn't. He communicated with. He, these are people that he, he spoke through. Was them. Is God's word an advantage? It is. How are you going to know anything about God without God's word? Without the oracles of God. You can see how a master stroke of the devil is to get people not to really think that God's word is an advantage and to try to tear it apart if they can and to, and to do whatever they can to make something else look like it is an advantage. Yeah. Why don't people come to God? Because they see something else as an advantage. Yes, right. They don't see God as an advantage. Why don't people talk about Jesus more often? Why don't they preach about Jesus more often? It, there are some things, brother, now I can't even barely, I'll tell you, I can't even listen to some of the Christian radio stations because they'll talk about everything else besides Christ. Yeah. They might sprinkle it in there a little bit, but what their main emphasis is, is something else is an advantage. Amen. And the point is something else. But God is our advantage. What God has said is our advantage. Mm -hmm. What he's doing through Christ Jesus is our advantage. This is how we know what God wants. This is how we know who God is. This is how, what we know what God expects. See, we got people running around making up a God for themselves. Even saying the name of Jesus, but they got another Jesus in mind because we know what God has said. We know what he hates. We know what he loves. We know what he expects. And yet we say we hear people that have the name of Christian that say that God is okay with certain things that we know already he's spoken on that he's not okay with. As a matter of fact, he hates these things, and they're saying it's okay. 
You know why? Because they haven't found that God's word is advantage. They haven't found being close to God is advantage. They haven't found that walking with Jesus is advantage. Because if they find these things to be advantage, they wouldn't be going down the wrong road. He gave this to the Jews, the oracles of God, his word. He entrusted it to them to give them an advantage. And they were advantaged by it. This was a great advantage. But without faith, it will not help anyone. You can have everything, all these things that God has given. But without faith, Jesus himself could come to the world and they crucified him. They didn't see it. They missed the whole point. <laughs> After everything God did with them, they still needed Jesus. We all need Jesus. Nobody's going to make it without Jesus. Amen. Today, we also have God's word. The Lord has made it available. I know at least where we are today in this place, we have it on the computers, the internet, the apps, you name it. And they still have people walking around ignorant of God's word. This is wrong and it's shameful. For anybody to call themselves a Christian. Now, I understand when you come in, you, there's a lot that you don't know. But to stay there is bad. To be a Christian for 40 years and now change, this is bad, especially when God has given us an advantage of his word. We have books, we have CDs, DVDs, MP3s, the internet. It just continues to go on. That God is going to make sure that everyone has the advantage. Just as the Jews had the advantage, this is talking to all. We're talking to all here. But if you ask a Christ, many questions, a basic Bible qu question that I know some of the young ones here in our room would know the answer to, they wouldn't even know what you're talking about. This is bad. Finding time to read the word of God, the oracles of God, or to listen to it on a daily basis, this should be like basic. But people despise this. Why is it? Because they don't find it to be an advantage. Yeah. Amen. We have people that are sitting, they're like they're sitting in an all-you-can-eat restaurant, mm. starving. Yeah, that's right. They're dying. Mm -hmm. But is it God's fault? No, it's not God's fault. He's made it so that we could be fat and the things that he has, he has given. That we could have as much as we want. We could get as much as we want. But there's some who is despising it. Brother, we don't want to be those people. Amen. We do not want to despise what God has given to be an advantage. This should not be. Whatever it takes, be sure you, this is not you. Amen. Do whatever you need to daily partake in the study of God's word. The advantages of the oracles of God or God's word are for all God's people. God wants to be known. If you want to know God, I can testify that he will make a way for you to know him more clearly. I can testify that I asked the Lord to give me somebody to help me. And he surrounded me with people who can help me. God, he will not hold back when it comes to this. We're talking about an eternal advantage here. Advantage here. Just as the Jews needed the righteousness from God, even with all their advantages, we need to be continue with God. Amen. Daily, we need to continue. I mean, by faith, yes. we need to continue to seek the Lord. There's never a good time for us to lay down yeah. and say, well, I've made it. I finally made it to us. You, there's never a good time for that. Yeah. We also will not be able to continue to run this race on our own. Mm -hmm. 
God has set it up that way, yes. that we need him. Amen. It is God who protects us and keeps us. It's God's righteousness that saves us. Without God, it doesn't matter what we have available to us. We can have the scriptures and not be opened up to us. But it's God who opens it up. He sends you people to be advantage to him, to, to you, to know him. Even if today we need God. Tomorrow we need God. For eternity, brethren, we are going to want God. Yeah. Thank you, brethren.